Talk radio for the sane among us. The 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 few of us left. Carrie Lucas with the Independent Women's Forum, IWF.org. Carrie, once again, you wrote this piece about how Rush doesn't need to win, win women, but conservatives do. And, you know, I get it that you can find some regulations here and there that, that might have a, uh, a backfiring effect. I mean, we could argue that, broadly speaking. But isn't the big picture issue one that the idea of protecting the commons, the stuff we all own collectively, and providing a social safety net, a baseline, not a not a a rich baseline, not a wealthy baseline, not a boy am I doing good, I don't think I'll ever work for the rest of my life baseline, but but some sort of a net through which people won't fall. Isn't that an issue which is the basis of the of the liberal worldview, as opposed to the conservative worldview where it says we don't need no stinking net, the the churches should be in charge of charity, the government basically should run the police and the army and that's it, end of discussion. Um I don't understand how you'll ever sell that message to women. Carrie? Is Carrie potted up, Sean? I'm not hearing you, Carrie. Carrie has vanished. Are you guys, are you guys, yeah. I'm so sorry. Are oh, you, are, hey. I'm so sorry about that. I think I walked into that, a bathroom that's, in my that's house. Quite, that's quite all right. We're, 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 back, on, we're back on the air, Kerry. Um, <laughs> my, my, my comment to you was I just don't understand how you'll ever sell to women the conservative worldview that, sorry, buddy, you're on your own, that the liberal worldview that, that has informed, frankly, I would say this country for most of its existence and certainly the, you know, the ideas of the Enlightenment that, that brought about modern Europe, uh, that that there is a certain threshold, a certain safety net that no person will be allowed to fall through or below. Uh, that, that that's something that, you know, I know it appeals to many men, speaking as a man, but it seems like it would also strongly appeal to many women. And I just don't, you know, you say that conservatives need to have a more tailored pitch. I don't get it. What, how can you possibly get around the fact that the conservative th philosophy is anathema to, to, uh, to nurturing for you know, but word. I think first of all, that's a, that's a tremendous character or uh, mischaracterization of what um, conservatives stand for today. Basically, nobody's talking about um, dismantling the the safety net so that the the truly poor and needy are um, out in the cold. Um, what, right now, when you think about what the the proposals are that come um, from conservatives and those who believe in limited government, it's how we can make it so we try to help people get themselves. Um, get through their hard times and become independent again without having government take over everything. You know, right now, if you think about something like health care, and I think health care is one of the, the ones that, that liberals often talk about as if um, we're going to, you know, if conservatives ran the world, that there would be absolutely no government support or that um, that anyone who got sick and was poor is going to be thrown out on, on the streets. And, and that's absolutely Well, I've had conservatives on the show say that. Okay, that, that that's the right way to go because what that will do is it'll create a space for the private marketplace to come in and fill that need. Okay, well, I mean, there's, if you look at what, what's being proposed in Congress, it's no. It's instead that they want to put um, money in people's hands so that they can purchase individual insurance on the private market and make sure that there is um, through regulations or through a, a government program, have something so that um, that there is individual uh, individual insurance that's that's available and affordable um, to um, to individuals, but not create uh, essentially a government uh, these g tremendous government programs. Carrie, rather than sounding like a conservative, you're sounding like somebody who wants to advance the interests of the corporations by use of government money without a, a, a guiding principle. No offense, no, but you see, that's, what that's, am I missing here? Well, I mean, because you're missing the element of competition, Tom. You're, you're missing the idea that, that there actually are in the same way that... But how can you have competition if the there. government is providing the baseline? Well, no, no, no. If you if you provide, well, there can be. Let's have a government program um, that provides for the, the truly needy, and that you then have a uh, a tax credit that will allow me to to tap up um, how much I can get in the uh, in individual insurance market, um, so that you reach some level. You know, in the same way you said vouchers, that vouchers right now. If you look at right now in D.C. Um, in D.C. schools, the average cost of a private school in D.C. is somewhere around. Um, Six thousand dollars, I believe, and um, and they have a seventy-five hundred dollar uh, voucher that allows kids to 
not not they can't all go to Sidwell Friends and to the the very very expensive rich um, uh, private schools that you hear so much about. But it means that they can qualify for a whole lot of, of private schools that are out there. Why can't we do something like that for for healthcare? I think that makes because a lot what of happens is the private healthcare. schools. Speaking as somebody who's on the board of directors of a private school and has been for 20 years, private schools discriminate. Private schools pick and choose what kids they're going to admit. Public schools can't. And when you have a voucher system like that, what you do is you create giant ghettos in the public schools. They become the dumping yeah. ground. Well, but if you look, do you think that's what's happening in D.C. right now with yes. the, the 1700? That's the, first of all, the, the, right now the, the vouchers are assigned by lottery. It is to poor kids across the board. You have four applicants for every one voucher that is being offered, and and they are going to a wide array of nobody's. They, they're all enrolled in private school, and they say uh, their parents report much higher satisfaction. And again, parents are competing for these. But the, the ghetto, the, the, the ghetto is in the, the public school system where kids can't can't just. And that's yeah. what you liberals want to keep them there. Well, okay. I, I think we've kind of, we, we still haven't answered the big question. Maybe maybe in our next conversation, you know, how how can conservatives repackage the big, because I think, frankly, it's the big picture things that are going to sell this on either side, ultimately. It's what Ronald Reagan did. It's what uh, Jimmy Carter did. Uh, in any case, Kerry Lucas, IWF.org. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program.